All right, hello. This video is to help you with your first uh, assignment for AP Computer Science, which is to install these programs on a home computer. Um, the two programs are called Eclipse and Java, and you can install them on a desktop computer, a laptop computer. Uh, either one will be fine. Mac, PC is fine. Will not probably work on a Chromebook at all, um, but as long as it's a regular Mac or PC, you should be just fine. The computer I'm running this on currently is a PC, so if you have a Mac, it'll likely look a little bit different when you uh, go through these steps, but the idea is the same where you need to get these two programs installed on your computer. The challenging part of this is there's a bunch of different versions of Java. In fact, I think they're up to Java 11 already, um, and same thing with Eclipse. All right, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Um, we're going to install one called Photon, hopefully. And then um, Java, I think the only Java you're going to be able to download is Java 11, right? And so the hard part is sometimes these um, different versions don't play well together. So you have to like, get a version of Java that's compatible with a version of Eclipse. Um, but I think if we can get Java at school, we're going to use um, Java 10 in Photon. And I think for your home computers, if you do Photon and Java 11, I think that should be just fine. If you have any issues with this, please uh, let me know, like send me screenshots or send me an email if you have any problems. It also works really well if you Google search the error you get. Um, there's a lot of good articles about how to fix it. And, and most of the time, if you have a problem, it's a problem with the, the compatibility between the version of Eclipse and Java. All right, so what these are real quick. So Java is just a programming language. And so it's just a format for writing programs. Uh, but you need like special software to run those programs. So Java has a, what's called like a runtime environment that allows you to run your programs. And so that's what we need to, to download here is the, the code that'll make our programs run. Um, and then you need what's called an editor, right? So an editor is just what you write the programs in, what you type the commands in. And you can actually type them in in just any text editor, right? So I have actually Notepad. Let's see, Notepad, you could actually type a Java program, public class program one, Blah, 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 blah. This is what a Java program looks like. You could actually do it right in Notepad, uh, but this Eclipse thing we're going to use has a lot of nice features. Like it'll have color highlights and it'll have autocomplete. So it's got a lot of nice features that Notepad does, doesn't have. Right? So um, we want to get Eclipse. And again, the version we're going to use at school is Photon. So I think we should be able to get that on your home computers too. I don't. The versions don't matter all that much just as long as they, they play well. All right, so first up um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get um, Java 11. Okay, so all you need to do is go to um, go to Google and just do a search for uh, download Java. I'm going to make sure my thing is running here still. I'm not 100% sure it actually is. Screen recorder. Okay, sorry. And I think it is still running. Sorry about that. I wasn't sure. All right. So anyways, we're going to download Java. We search for it. And then you just click this download free Java. It should be the first link for sure. And then there will be a red Java download button. So you click that. And then uh, agree to start the download. So another red button. All right, and then it'll download something. So wherever that goes, you get an uh, exe. Just click on that and run it. All right, and that should install Java for you. All right, and again, this might look a little bit different on a Mac, but wherever you download it, just click on it and run it, um, and that'll get Java on your computer. If you happen to already have Java, like a lot of your computers probably already have Java, as long as it's like at least Java 10, you should be okay. All right, if, if you have like Java 8 or 9, you might want to go to this site and just download it and then this latest version will overwrite your older version of Java. Okay, but now that Java is installed, now we just got to get Eclipse. And I'm not actually going to run this install because I already have it installed. So that you is going to have to do on your own. All right, to get Eclipse, um, we're going to do download Eclipse. We're going to search for that. But um, because we want to use an older version, do download Eclipse Photon. All right, and so I think that'll take us to the pages that lets us download Photon. So here's Eclipse Photon. Okay, and there's also many, many versions with inside of Photon itself. All right, so there's all these different packages. Honestly, I don't know the difference. Um, I think the first one will probably work here. 
All right, and then there's again a whole bunch of different versions. All right, and so we're going to do one that's Eclipse IDE for Java developers. I think if you did one of these other ones, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But if you want to keep it consistent with what's in class, Eclipse IDE for Java developers, you probably have 64 bit Windows if you have a Windows machine, but you might want to check that out quick if you're not sure. Um, you could just Google search how do I figure out what Windows bit system I have, but most are 64. And again, if you have Mac or Linux or something, there'd be other options. All right, so sorry, I'm an Eclipse IDE for Java developers, and I'm going to do 64 bit and click download. It takes me here, I click download. All right, and one of the weird parts about this is it's going to take a little bit of time, uh, but it's actually a .zip file. Okay, and so what, what's really weird about Eclipse is it's not an EXE and executable, so you don't, you don't really install anything. Um, once you get this zip file downloaded, you just unzip it, and that's it. Then it's installed. All right. Um, and inside of those installed uh, unzipped files, you'll find like a EXE, and that's what you run. And I usually, once I have it unzipped, um, I just make sure I unzip it like in my programs, and make sure I know how to get that Eclipse.exe um, program and run it from there. Okay, so this one is still downloaded. I'm going to pause here and then I'll turn the video back on. In a second. Okay, so hopefully we've got Eclipse downloaded now and this .zip. And the .zip is just a compressed file, so we need to uncompress it. Um, and that will install it. So there's no real installing. You just uh, click on it here. And again, it might look a little bit different on the Mac, but... Uh, if you click, uh, you'll open it up and you'll see I'm looking at a .zip here on my Windows computer, so I need to actually extract it or unzip it. So for me, I can just right click and hit extract all and that unzips it. Okay, and then you need to know where you put it. So it looks like it's defaulting to users, Westpital downloads, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it, I don't know, sometimes I put it, I browse here and put it in my program files, like C program files is probably a better spot to put it. Uh, but as long as you do show extracted files, you should be okay. Okay, so once you do that, I'm not gonna do it because I already have it installed, but once you extract it, um, you'll see something that looks like this, right? You'll see like Eclipse, and then probably like Eclipse Photon, maybe you gotta click inside of here. But you got to find this like eclipse.exe because that's the program you're actually going to run. So you can run it right from here as long as you can remember the location. Otherwise, you can right click and like create a shortcut, right? Which is what I do. I just put a shortcut um, down here on my desktop. So now I got my eclipse photon right there. Um, and if everything went well, it'll look like this. If it doesn't, it'll give you some crazy error. And then I would just Google search it and see if you can figure it out. But uh, I do want to show you um, a little bit about um, like your first program and stuff. So if you've never made a program before, I'm going to keep going here. Um, this is where your, your, your files will be actually saved. So the programs, this is an important location called the workspace, which is basically the files you're working on. Um, and you can like pick different ones. So here's different ones I've worked on in the past. Um, but it looks like mine are at C, users, Daniel Hospital, desktop. So it's on my desktop workspace complete. All right, so actually what happens is, if I can find this here, yeah, got so many different names. Workspace 7, where is my workspace complete folder? Do, 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 workspace 3. Well, it doesn't matter, I'll just pick a different one here. I'll just do workspace 3. I don't know why I can't find workspace complete. Um, but anyways, um, it'll make like these little folders and you'll start to find your program. So like here's a program that I must have wrote at somewhere sometime called the dot Java, right? And you can actually click on it and see what it looks like. Um, but these are what you'll turn in. So knowing uh, where your workspace is um, is useful because that's where your programs will be. All right. And so, you know, if you look here, I'm going to just copy this once and see if I can just paste it in here. And so you can see, if I go to that spot, you can see all my different programs here, like my chapter 10 ones, and I go to source, and here's these .java, these are the programs. And that's what you'll actually turn in. So when you create one in Eclipse, it'll actually create a .java in your, your file structure on your computer. Basically create a file, just like a Word file or whatever, but it's called .java. All right, so anyways, I'm going to just use my workspace complete. Oh, it must have been down here. There it is. 
do. So here's where all my programs are being put in this workspace complete. So it's just going to load up um, Photon, and it will take a little bit of time, especially that first time you do it. Um, it's part of the process. And uh, I'm going to show you how to just make like your first program and get it running. Sorry for the delay here. That's funny, I tell a joke, but I don't, I don't have any good jokes. So load, load, load. And again, it is kind of complex this first time you, you're doing it, but once you get it set up, it's pretty slick. It's got a lot of neat features. Later in the chapter, um, you can make like graphical programs, GUI programs pretty easy using Eclipse. It's got some nice features there. So, uh, yeah, it'll be good for you. When you load it up, it'll look a little different, and you'll probably see like a welcome screen, but you can just X out of that. All right, and then you'll see something a little more like this, hopefully. Okay, so once you're here to get started, uh, we have to make a new Java project. So you just do File, New, and then Java Project. And I'd make one per chapter. So I'll call this Chapter 1 um, Programs. I think I already have that, so I'll just call it Chapter 1 Program. Make sure it's something actually different. Then hit uh, Finish. You'll see it. Here's my Chapter 1 Program over here. All right, and then um, inside of that, uh, you want to make a new package, and all packages literally is a folder, all right? And so Java 10 like requires you to actually put them in packages. So you can right-click a new file, new package, or you can do it from up here, just file, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Do file, new package. Okay, and I also usually call it programs with a lowercase p. It doesn't really matter, but if you keep it the same, then it's easier for me when I grade them, actually. So I'm just going to call it programs, hit finish. And now you can see my little package. And now that I've made that special folder inside of my Java project, I'm going to make a new program. So I'm going to do file, new, and Java programs are called like class files. So just do a new class. And you can call it whatever. Um, a lot of times you call your first one hello world because it just prints out the statement hello world. And hit finish. Okay, and what happens is uh, Eclipse auto generates some code for you. And in this video, I'm not going to cover what all this means, but this is just the package it's in. And this is where your program starts this bracket, and this is where it ends. All right, um, this hello world actually, public class, and this hello world, that needs to match the name of your Java. So we have hello world and hello world. Okay, and then this code I'm going to type here. Um, don't worry too much about it. We'll go over more what it means in class. I don't have time to do it in this video. Um, but I'm actually going to double click this too to make it bigger. It's kind of a cool feature of Eclipse. So if you want a bigger space to type in, just double click it and then double click it back to make it smaller. So anyways, I'm going to type in some commands here. Public static void main string. And you won't understand necessarily what all these mean right away, but you'll get there eventually. Okay, and then the main commands we're learning in this first chapter are just called system.out.println, which is prints out statements. So I'm just going to print out hello world. And again, we'll go over more of like this stuff later in class, but this is just a specialized method that runs every time you hit go up here. This is a little go button. It'll run this main method, and it has to look exactly like this. If you even have one thing off, like you have arg instead of args, it, it won't work. All right, and then this print just prints something out to the console. So if I hit save and then I hit run, you can see it just prints out hello world. All right, and we can just print out something else too if I want to do another statement. Uh, Mr. Paris is the best. Second up to my boss there, and then you can see when I run it, I get the two things. All right, so once you got here, you're in good shape, all right? Um, you're, you've got it all set up. You can make new programs, right? Just right click, do a new class or whatever, and um, you can start working on your programs, right? So hopefully, this video helped you out. Again, if you get stuck, Google searching a lot of stuff is a, is a good way to, to figure it out. All right, good luck. Please ask if you have questions.